Hi friends, it's Drayton Callison with World's Greatest Kiting. And I'm Sky McDonough, I'm a local St. Pete glass artist. And we have co-curated an exhibit at the studio at 620 called Kite. Let's go in and check it out. This piece is called Clutch of Kites. Um, by Simone Boyer and uh, their handmade washi paper and I think they're hand painted or printed and then this is bamboo this bottom part um, they're not flyable but they're decorative and she's a local artist in the Tampa Bay area this is another piece by Simone Boyer and she's a local artist here. Um, handmade washi paper and hand dyed. Um, the frame is made out of bamboo. And again, I think this one maybe you can fly. And it's sold. <laughs> this piece is by Lindy Johnson. She's from uh, Montana. All of these pieces are handmade paper that she uses except for the birch. The birch is actually found in the forest, and then she makes little panels out of it. And um, is this a Japanese fire kite? That style kite, and it does fly. It has a little poem up here. This piece is made by Eric from Noble Glass and Neon. And we chose to include this piece because the moon is facing up and gives us the inspirational vibes and it's such a beautiful bright blue color. This piece is by one of my colleagues, Greg, and uh, he's from St. Croix and used to make these type of kite, the style kite when he was a child. The frame is made out of balsa wood and then the front is made out of paper. It's been hand painted and titled Lionheart. These kimono kites are by an artist named Scott Skinner from Colorado. He makes kites typically that are in the shape of a bird. In these kites, he's hidden the bird in his applique method. You can see on both of these, and inside of that applique is actually images from a Cody kite, which is a totally different style kite. The whole string cheese neon Deglo breakdown. This is by Ty Billings, who uh, used to have a company called High as a Kite, and they produced this very fantastic tie-dye fabric that you see here in this diamond kite up top. This is one of my favorite kites in the display. This Jerry kite here is a collaboration with Ty Billings of High as a Kite and uh, Miki Saito, who uh, painted the, this awesome fabric that they Made. So you see some detail in here, especially in the hair. It's a unique kite. Unique kite. I really like this one. Another kite that gets a lot of attention here is the Hippie Bus. And it's also by Ty Billings. And one of my uh, one of my favorites, in fact, a smaller version of this hangs above my desk in my office. So I really I like this kite. It's a good flyer. This is a unique piece of art from friend Christian Baden Powell in Texas. He uses a style of, uh, of sewing called applique, when you see a lot of detail on this kite that you don't see on a lot of other types of kites. Instead of painting, he sews in the image on these kites. This and the other one that he sent in, uh, Levi, that you'll see just in a few minutes. The name of this is Keshian. This little painting here is one that I did myself in 2016 for some video for my YouTube channel but uh, it's called Kite Dreams and if you look closely here there's some abstract mountains and uh, my intention was to uh, follow this theme of this Japanese theme and this woman in a kimono flying this uh, Japanese kite and her thoughts going up to the kite. This piece is by Karen Mahardy. It's made out of uh, kiln-formed glass, and it's entitled Spinnaker. 
It makes a lot of beautiful cast shadows and is really inspired by wind. This unique piece is a collaboration between two local artists, Derek Jenkins and Jewel Escobar. And if you want to see more about this in detail, there's a video on World's Greatest Kiting that uh, is just about this painting, but it is created with the intention of being able to feel the art and not just see it. Uh, the writer of the poem that's in this painting is blind and the uh, artist was asked to create the poem so uh, people without sight can feel this and then uh, be able to connect with the art in a better way. This second piece by Christian Baden-Powell is called Levi and it is a character from Godspell. If you see it from a distance, you can really see some different kind of detail in it, but it's a kinetic height and what it does when it flies is take on this motion, but it stays very steady in the air. It's a unique flying piece of art. This triptych of kites is made by Wayne Hosking, who uh, handmade these. Uh, it's made of bamboo and washi paper. And he also dyed these and used a block print to create most of the art on this. This piece is by an, another local artist here in St. Petersburg, Avis Reyes. And although it's not a kite in the uh, image, it is the moon tethered to uh, her with the kite string. Uh, it does give you the notion of looking up, which is the theme of our show or something that we wanted to promote in this time is uh, keeping your eyes upward. And this painting by Avis does that. This is another piece by Ty Billings. You can see the tie-dye fabric in the collar and on the ice cream cone of this dancing bear. But this is, I just think this is one of the cooler kites that I've seen, especially uh, flying is, as you can tell, it's about the size of a regular street sign. This would be a cool street sign, what do you think? Yeah. There's two kites left to show you. One is this a simple diamond kite we used it it's a fighter kite we had a kite making workshop at the first world's greatest kiting art exhibition here at the studio at 620 this one was made by kenny jensen who curated that show and it's a it's a collage of all the people that were involved in that and then the last of the kites is this beetle kite this is a japanese kite made in the 60s and uh, very special to the show because it was in the possession of David Ellis, who was a co-founder of the studio at 620. And this kite inspired the first World's Greatest Kiting art exhibition. And it was also in the theme of looking up and uh, a different style of art that in kiting that may not be recognized so much. And, uh, but also very inspiring. So this, this is a very special kite. And also the, uh, the poem by Bob Devin Jones, his business partner and co-founder of the studio is displayed on the pedestal right below it. It's a very special tribute to uh, David Ellis. One of my favorite pieces in this entire exhibit is this neon kite. It gets so much attention. It's right here on the front of the street. And this is the artist. This is who made Akira Oglesby. How long did it take you to make this? Uh, I don't really keep track of things like that, but I would say maybe like a good week's worth of work. Um, just spread out a little. And of course my mentor, Eric Roski, who does uh, neon as well, has owned a shop for 40 years doing neon, um, helped me along the way. And uh, we were just looking for something that was just like clean, simple, and floated. Just like the neon kite here. This is such a rad piece. Thanks for making Thanks. it. It gets so much attention. Yeah, well that's neon for yeah. you. The brightest light. Thank you, Studio at 620, and Bob, and Marcus, and Corlette, and everyone else involved for helping us to put this exhibit together. This is really a beautiful space for this. Thank you for that. And thank you to all those who made it out and got to see our show in person. 
and we are looking forward to having another show next year and hope to see you there. Thanks for watching and taking this tour with us. We'll see you in the next video. Happy flying.